The man known as the mastermind of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor at one stage also wanted to invade mainland Australia. So when code breakers intercepted Admiral Rokoko Yamamoto's flight schedule in 1943, a daring assassination plot unfolded. Victoria Cross recipient Mark Donaldson travelled to Papua New Guinea, the, the island of Bougainville, to find his plane. Seventy years ago, Australian troops were forging these waters. We've come to find a relic which resonates through the decades. It's still remote, and finding the ghosts of war is difficult. Accessible only by swampy jungle track. A trek very few have made. So this is Yamamoto's plan. Yes, the supreme Japanese naval commander, Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, mastermind of the dastardly sneak attack on Pearl Harbor, gunned from the skies of the South Pacific by these Army Air Corps flyers. History will judge me for what I'm about to do. Immortalised in Pearl Harbor movies, it's what Yamamoto did here that made him the biggest threat to Australia in World War II. Rabaul, on the island of New Britain. And from this base, soldiers, sailors and airmen of Imperial Japan can attempt to break the fragile hold of Americans and Australia. Rabaul became Japan's most important strategic base in the South Pacific. Just down there, more than 100,000 troops were garrisoned. From this harbour, Yamamoto launched his powerful fleet into the Coral Sea and sent invasion forces to Papua and Kokoda. Rabaul was made a fortress. Anti-aircraft guns ringed the mountains to protect Yamamoto's fleet. And underground a vast tunnel system to protect their troops and leaders. This is the very bunker from which Yamamoto plotted his war. From here he would have sent the message that killed him. An alert radio operator intercepts the secret message listing Yamamoto's flight schedule to the Bougainville airfield, 435 miles north of Guadalcanal. Yamamoto would leave from Rabaul on a morale-boosting trip to his bases. This unique film actually shows him at Rabaul airfield seeing off Betty Bombers, the same type he himself used on his death flight. 38s head out from Guadalcanal that morning. It would be the longest range intercept of the entire war, skimming 30 feet above water to avoid radar for a 1,000 kilometre round trip. And four lightnings will smash Yamamoto's bombers. The intercept operation was a very complicated long shot. It required absolute precision timing. But there was one vital thing that the Americans had in their favour. They knew that Yamamoto was obsessed with punctuality. We were apprehensive whether we would find the bombers or not. And when we hit them right on the button, we couldn't believe it hardly. And we were elated. Rex Barber shot him down. Barber relentlessly hammers the bomber into the jungle. A fiery end for Japan's greatest military mind. That was the propaganda version, with dummy footage. Rex Barber gave the real story before he died. I started shooting across into his right engine. I pulled in right behind him and continued to shoot at the right engine. The engine uh, started to smoke badly, black smoke pouring from it. Japanese films have painted a heroic end, Yamamoto stoically accepting his fate. The wings there. I'm guessing. And that's the front. That's the thruster at the, the, you know, the tail. Yamamoto sat in here, near the rear of the plane. The bullet that killed him possibly made this hole. Looks like one, because it's pushed the metal out that way. The Admiral was found strapped in his seat, his body cremated. Some ashes were brought back to Japan. Yamamoto died a hero, the Japanese people were told, in the front line, meeting death gallantly in a war plane. His loss was greater than many battleships. 
The war carried on for two more years, but Japan's hopes may have died, here in the jungle, with Yamamoto. In Bougainville, Mark Donaldson, 7 News.